Welcome back, everybody, to another week of Parsha at the Barber. We're not at the Barber. Um, because, uh, like we said last week, it is the Omer, and therefore haircuts are not really being ha- being had. Having being. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Kedoshim. Normally, most of the time, it is together, Achramais and Kedoshim, but both Parshas. But this year, we have it separate because it's a leap year. And this Parsha contains uh, many, many mitzvahs, many commandments, all about how a Jew is supposed to live, how to remain holy, how to remain connected to Hashem, how to not go off the correct path. And one of the greatest, if not the greatest mitzvah in the Torah, which is Kamecha, to love your fellow Jew, is in this parsha. Hill said that that is really the foundation and everything else is just a... Uh, commentary? An explanation? Anyway, I don't know, I don't, I get mixed up if that was Hill or Rabbi Akiva, but um, that's uh, one of the big ones, right? Love your fellow as yourself. And uh, this week I'm going to bring just a few stories. Two of them are pretty chilling. <laughs> chilling stories that have to do with things that are mentioned in this week's Parsha. And then a really beautiful one. So, and just before we start, please, if you could, leave a like. Um, and subscribe if you like this. Tell your friends about it. It really helps uh, spread it, spread, spread, spread this stuff to more people. And it helps us grow. And we'll be able to give more quality content. Thank you so much. So, let's get into the Parsha. One of the things that it says in the parsha is loy senachashi. You should not, for lack of a better uh, translation, because I didn't do the research I should have, I always get stuck with the English. <laughs> um, not to basically, uh, not to be superstitious and not to, you know, do predictions, you know, people who do the tarot cards and stuff like that. That would all go into... Um, uh, it also talks about not doing any kind of magic, you know, something, let's say, for example, voodoo would be an example of something which is absolutely uh, forbidden. And um, it, it's one of, now, the word senachashu also means, the word senachashu also means, um, it, has, it has the root word of nachash in it, which means a snake. And it brings down in the Miyam Lois over here that it's saying that do not act in a way, in a wicked way, where you're going to, your bones will turn into snakes. What does that mean? That people who lived wicked lives, they don't have any rest in their, in, 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 when they're buried. And they end up causing uh, harm to li- living people after their death. Uh, And there's a story that's brought down, which is a very scary story about a certain woman who was not a good person. She was, uh, you know, people suspected her of, you know, being a person who sinned. And um, she was very cruel to poor people. Not only did she not help them, she wouldn't give them any tzedakah, she would actually oppress them and and, um, humiliate them. And she was so unbearable that her own children and you know, her sons and her daughters-in-law couldn't bear to live with her and they lived, she lived alone and her sons would come every once in a while to you know, take care of her, give her whatever she needed. And she lived for over 100 years and she, died, and she ended up dying alone and they didn't even realize she died until a while after her death and they finally you know, found her dead and they buried her. And I don't understand what this means in the story. But it's very, very scary. It's something like out of a horror movie. Actually, there, you'll. It sounds like out of a horror movie. It's it's very scary, but um, it basically says that this person would call out the names of sick people 
after after her death, right? And whoever would answer her would die within seven days. Now, just to pause for a second, this sounds... I'm, I'm not going to go naming, you know, horror films out there, but that this idea is was copied to a horror movie. It, it, literally, that, like, someone who answered... A, you know, whatever it is, answered the phone, would die in seven days. So I, it was crazy when I read this, but um, I don't really want to talk about movies. I just thought that that was insane. Anyway, and it says that within 40 days, over 200 people had been killed through her and they had and they had to end up burning her body when we burnt the body. Finally, um, you know, it stopped. Uh so in general, what this is saying is do not act in a way where you know, you're, you're, a person shouldn't act in a way that is wicked that's going to cause them unrest after their death and they're going to cause harm to people like snakes. Now, about burning the body, I was just thinking like, normally we don't do that. Obviously, this is a case where people were dying, so <laughs> it's a little bit different. Okay, uh, we had a little bit of... Uh... Problem. Basically, the camera is a very nice camera, but it also overheats sometimes. So that's what happened. We are back. Okay, so we finished that story, that uh, creepy story. But there's also another story, which is uh, wouldn't exactly call it a positive story, but it's a very strong message and it shows the importance of not shaving with a razor. I mean, I wanted to say, shows the importance of having a beard, because, you know, I mean, we, you know, the Baalish were very, in general, very, you know, you gotta have a beard. But uh, the actual love in, in this week's parsha is, it says, Lois ha-kifu pa'asreishchem, Lois ha-kifu pa'asreishchem, v'loi sashchis es pa'as likonecha. And it's very saying, right, you have to have pace, a certain minimum of length, not to, you know, make it round over here. Uh, and you have to have sideburns. In Judaism, sideburns are always the style. And, um, and also not to shave with a razor. Now, there's a story in the time of Rabbi Huda Hasid. The previous story is also in the time of Rabbi Huda Hasid. But in this story, Rabbi Huda Hasid was actually involved. And there was a certain rich man who would always shave the razor, and the Buddha would caution him, would warn him, and would tell him, uh, you know, someone who who does this, so when they die, they are shaden, they're demons that come in, in, in the form of cows. I don't know exactly what that means. If they're head of, head of a cow, I don't know what it means, but uh, and, and, and you know. They, they basically take issue with the fact that, they, that he uh, cut with a razor. And how do you know this? Because if you take the letters, Pe'as Reishchem Veloi Sashchis, so part of the prohibition of cutting the sideburns and part of the prohibition of not to destroy the, uh, the beard, which means the razor, you take those together, Pe'as Reishcha is Pei Reish, the Loi Sashchis is Vav and Saf, Parais, which means cows. So, um, and, but this guy didn't listen. He was like, no, you know, he gave excuses why. He said, you know, I'm very sensitive, it bothers me, it itches me. And he wouldn't listen to Abidah Chasid. Now, eventually this person dies. And, the entire community, including Rabbi Yudha Chassid and other great rabbis, were there at his funeral. He was an important man. And Rabbi Yudha decides to speak to this deceased person. He basically wrote the holy name of Hashem, put it on his, put it on him. I, th- I guess he put it on his forehead. I'm not sure. I don't think the story says exactly where, but he basically put it on the dead person. And right away, the dead person starts to hit and pull at his hair. They hit his head and pull at his hair and everyone there was so scared of him ran away and Abiyud al-Khasid asks him what's, what's happening with you? And he says, I should have listened to you. Right when I passed away, 
he said, you know, uh, these demons came in the form of cow. Uh, a demon in the form of cow came. He had a big uh, what, vessel of of tar and sulfur, I think, or sulfur and pitch. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know how to translate which one. I know it's for sure sulfur. Then I don't know if it's tar or pitch. Anyways, he said he stuck him in there. He was stuck. He couldn't move. And then an angel took it from there. And uh, I was brought to the base in Shemaya, the heavenly court. And they asked me, do you know how to learn? Do you know how to do you learn Torah? So I said, yes. And they said, uh, okay, so read. And they opened up the Chumash. And it opens up right to the part where it says, You can't destroy the beard. You can't shave the razor. And uh, right away they said that, uh, you know, I had to serve time in Gehenna. And, uh, but before then, there was a voice that came out and said, wait, my son Yehuda, I guess right, Yehuda, was a said, the, 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 the voice said, my son Yehuda needs to, uh, he, he needs to speak to this, to this uh, individual, and he was given permission to go and to come back, right? to go down back to earth and to come back. And uh, then Yehuda Chassid, you know, removed the, the Shem Hashem, you know, Hashem, and he returned to being deceased. Now, again, the point of this story is that, you know, sometimes we, we could think that certain mitzvahs are not so important, you know, it's whatever, not to, and a person could say, okay, God doesn't want, but uh, who am I hurting? I'm not doing anything, but we never know the importance and the severity of certain mitzvahs are various, and therefore, you know, to be careful, and we see from here that this is one of the biggies, right? You know, people... Some people keep their beards, they don't cut it all. Some people shave, but for sure not to shave the razor. Um, now, here's a story, a uh, beautiful story. It's a very, very happy story. And I thought I'd said it before. Maybe I said it through different parts because I listened back to last year. Go check it out, by the way. It's Akram Mason Condition Together. And I didn't see it. So, here it goes. There was once a town that didn't have rain for a very long time. Now, in those days, what happened when you don't have rain? You fast. And uh, they fasted on Monday and Thursday, and they really were praying as, as hard as they can, loving as much as they can, to get rain. And the Chacham, the, 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 you know, the sage of the, uh, the town, had a dream, and he said, you should know that you're not going to get rain until a certain store owner until he davens for the until he leads the congregation, until he's a chazan. And uh, he wakes up and he says, how is this possible? This store owner is, uh, he's, he's, he's so ignorant of, of, of the words of prayer, he probably, I mean, he, he probably doesn't, he, he does, he, his prayer, it's not just that he, he doesn't pray well, he doesn't know the basic words. How is he going to say it? And he didn't know what to do, and he decided to wait and see what would happen and uh, try it out. And the next day they asked who's going to go for the Amma. The people asked who's going to lead us, and he, he says this person. Everybody was like very puzzled. But he goes over to the man and he tells him, you're going to lead us. And the person says, well, what do you mean? I, don't, I can't even say Kriya Shema properly. Even the basic, basic prayers, I can't say. And he said, you're going to lead however you know how. Do it however you know how. And so this guy takes off his towels and fill and he runs out and everyone's wondering, well, where is he going? And Chacham says, wait, wait till he comes back. Let's see what happens. Let's wait a little bit. And not too long later, he comes back running in with a scale. And he starts praying to Hashem in his words. He says, Hashem, these are the scales that I use in my store for weighing. And the two um, the two sides of the scale, the two parts of that you weigh on, those are your name hey. There are two hey's in Hashem's name of Yud Kei Vav Kei. Each one is a hey. The line in the middle that they're suspended off of is a vav. And the handle, there was a handle that you would hold it with, that's, that corresponds to your name, 
to, to the Yud in your name. And these, uh, this scale will give testimony. And obviously this was, I guess, sort of like a, like, like he's saying, you know, he's, he's testifying in the name of Hashem. They'll give testimony that these, that, that, that I never, I was always honest. I never used, you know, I never, uh, uh, fixed the scales in a certain way. I never used, um, Weights that were incorrect. And if I'm lying, then a fire should come in and consume me. But if I'm telling the truth, please give us rain. And right when he finished praying, big heavy clouds came and rained so much that he couldn't even go out of the shul. I had to stay inside. And the Chacham stood up and said, wow, look at the power and the importance of being honest in business. And the the great severity of not being honest, you know, of, of, doesn't it have to be dishonest? It could be, you know, that a person is not so careful. He's not exact. And he said, look, there were so many great people here and yet our answers were, were our, yet our prayers weren't answered. But this person who was so careful about his business, that's what gave us the merit to have, to have uh, the rain. And uh, it's a beautiful story. Just shows us that uh, we can, we all have what to improve, and uh, you can never be too careful when it comes to the uh, money of another person. And uh, this is obviously because in the in the in, the, uh, in this week's parsha it discusses you know being just when it comes to business and not using fake false weights or a weight that isn't doesn't correspond to what it says on it or you know and, and, and to use uh, proper scales. Um, yeah, now. I just want to finish off with something from the Rebbe, like we always try to do. And that's a sicha that the Rebbe speaks about, a Rashi, on the Pasuk of Lufnei Iver Lissi It says, do not place a stumbling block in front of a blind man. And Rashi says, what does that mean? It means not to give him advice, she'ena higenes, which is not fit for him. Like, for example, let's say... He, you know, he asks you what to do. You shouldn't give him advice to uh, sell his field and then you're going to go and take it from him. So the Rebbe asks, why didn't Rashi... Rashi always comes to speak about the most simple and straightforward interpretation of the Pasuk, of, the, of, of what the Torah says. So why do we see that Rashi, instead of saying that... This is talking about literally putting a stone in front of a blind person. It's talking about something metaphorical. And their answer to the reason is because we already spoke about damages. In, in previous parasha, previously in the Torah, it already describes that you're not allowed to cause damage to somebody. So this is included in there. Now, obviously, you know, there could be a, you know, it's obviously much more sinister and, and, and much more of a nasty thing to do to place a stumbling block in front of somebody who's blind. But Rashi is coming to say that this is obviously coming to tell something beyond physical damages because we already discussed that. And what's so incredible is that Rashi is not only saying don't give bad advice, he's saying don't give advice which is not 100% geared towards this person. Now how do we know this? Because Rashi only brings this example of a field and selling the field, which can be mutually beneficial for both the buyer and the seller, right? Even though he is not giving him advice that is only for his good, it only has his friend in mind because he's also thinking about himself and buying the field, but it still can be mutually beneficial. In Rashi's source, in Teres Kanim, it brings examples of a person saying, telling a person to leave on a journey at a certain time so that bandits could ambush him, which is real harm. And there are other examples there of also causing real harm. In this case of, of the field and him advising him to sell it, there can be financial gain for the person he's giving advice to. Nevertheless, there's a chiddush over here, which is saying that if you are giving advice to a person, which is, right, the person thinks you're helping him, and you have ulterior motives, even if it's going to be good for him, right? It's good for everybody. Win-win. You shouldn't do that.
when you give advice to somebody, when you tell someone that you you're in in the under the pretenses that you're doing this for their good, you cannot involve yourself at all. It must be only for their good without any involvement of yourself, without thinking of yourself. Um, and I thought that was incredible. You know, many, many times we, we, uh, we involve ourselves too much. It doesn't even have to be about gain. Many times we can involve ourselves in, 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 in when a person, you know, is speaking to us, we kind of stick, our, stick ourselves in there and we, and we kind of make it about ourselves. And this could also be kind of a lesson where when we're there for someone, we have to be there for them 100%. And that's the way to do it. Um, there were a few hiccups. Uh, I, I realized that for a big part of this, I was not wearing this mic, so the audio is going to be coming out of there for some of it. It's going to be probably doable, but it's going to be less than what I would have liked. Uh, please forgive that. And um, if you made it to the end, you're an absolute legend. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you found this uh, entertaining and informative. Once again, please smash the like button. Please subscribe. Please rate it if you're listening on Spotify. Rate it five stars. And uh, please consider supporting the channel. Uh, links are in the description. And uh, drop a comment. Drop a comment telling me what you thought, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see that's different, something that hasn't been on this channel yet. Um, yeah. Good Shabbos. And uh, until next time. Oh, I forgot to mention, it is Thursday night. And when you see this, it'll probably be Friday, which is still the birthday of the Rebbe Maharaj. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, one of his known sayings by now, by Hasidim, in, 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 especially in Chabad, says Lechatechila uh, Ariba means to go over to begin with. They're saying people they'll try to you know go somewhere they'll try to you can't go straight they'll go around they'll try to go under and then only after they'll try to go over it they'll try to you know go in a way of totally what I think this means is totally superseding something overcoming something uh, and I say this is what the, the Reb Marash what he would say was I say to start with, you should go over. In other words, there should be a certain level of energy and and a zest for life that just kind of steamrolls over everything and and uh, makes all the problems go away, or makes it there are, aren't even problems to begin with. But uh, yeah, I wanted to add that because it's a special day. And um, good Shabbos.